Okay, let's start talking about this continuous steer tank reactor. We're going to be operating it adiabatically. And it's going to be the following reaction. This is propylene oxide. It's going to be reacting with water in order to form propylene glycol. It's going to be adiabatic operation, meaning that the total heat flow will be zero. That is, that the temperature is likely not going to be zero. Pressure of operation, 3 bar. Total volume, 1000 liter. Now the feed is going to be as follows. So it's 24 Celsius the feed. And as you can see, there's a lot of water versus the propylene oxide ratio. So this is typically to ensure a excess of water and to ensure the reaction. Kinetic data is given as follows. And this will be our model. Okay, so let's set up everything. First things first, propylene oxide. And unfortunately, because we have several databases, we will have identical or similar ones. So I will go for this one right here. Oxide, as you can see, the molecular weight is pretty similar. So shouldn't change that much. Now, water and the final product, propylene glycol. So once again, because we have several glycol packages, we're going to have lots of them. So I know that this is C3H6O2. So C3H6 O2. So it could be this one or this one. I will choose this one right here because I know that the molecular weight is this one and the boiling point is this one here. So for pan, let's add this one and select the method. Non random to liquid. Model, run for this, okay. So we are selecting this one because we have polar substances, which is water. And let's continue with the simulation. This will be the feed, which is going to a reactor, a continuous sear tank reactor, and has an output. So this is the adiabatic product. The feed is as follows, 24 Celsius, 3 bar, mole flow rate is as follows. Now we know this is operating at 3 bar, and this is adiabatic, so we cannot state the temperature. we got to state that the heat duty applied or removed is equal to zero. This will be liquid only, because we know this will be essentially a liquid reacting with another liquid, forming a third liquid. 1000 liters sizing, add a new reaction, power law. So we know that this is actually not stated here. But the, the reaction, rate of reaction is given as minus K concentration of propylene oxide to the second power. So this is zero, water is not present in the rate of reaction, and this is a product, so that's why we are not including it. So this is to the second power. K depends right here, this is data for K. So let's go and add the new reaction. Propylene oxide with water, material balance, minus one, minus one, produces this product. Okay, now because we're stating this power law, we need to state this one as second power, no power, no power. Done. Kinetics, liquid base, K value. So N is zero, meaning that T to the T zero is equal to one. So mean this means that 
there is no temperature ratio and the activation energy 1.56 is 8 joule per kilomole not temperature requirement because this is to the zero so even though I might have 25 there should be no effect whatsoever and apparently we are done we have the feed we have the reactor conditions we can run this hopefully there are no errors there are no warnings so time to check out the results is temperature of the reactor the pressure true bar no pressure drop no heat duty the volume won't change and interestingly we have the residence time which can be changed to something more accurate 8.7 minutes so that's the time the species will be inside the reactor let's verify the results so we have adiabatic products Mole flow rates is what we are carrying. So we have a reaction of 19 moles of water, 18 something, almost all propylene oxide is reacting, and this is almost a 95 to 99 percent ratio. So the mole fractions doesn't seem that interesting because we have plenty of water, so they will be dilute. Okay. So this is our result. But let me add something more interesting. Let's assume that we have the option to operate this either adiabatic and isothermal. So the feed I'm going to make it double, one for the adiabatic, the other one for the isothermic. Iso isotherm product. The conditions are going to be pretty similar, but now I'm going to state the same temperature at the flow rate. Let's assume that we're not adding any extra heat. Same reaction, and as you can see, the reaction does not depend on the type of reactor. So that's the awesome thing on kinetic reactors. That even though you may change the type of reactor, the conditions of operation of the reactor, the kinetics will remain the same. So let's run this. And there are no errors, no warnings. So let me verify the results temperature remains this will be the heat duty that we need to apply or remove 5000 calories per second and the residence time remains pretty similar 8.9 minutes let's verify the results so we got isothermal results and the adiabatic results so clearly in the in the adiabatic case, we are producing 18.4 mole of propylene glycol, and in the second case, at 24 Celsius, we're almost producing nothing, meaning that we need to make this a adiabatic operation, or we might want to increase the temperature. So let's select 33 Celsius, which is approximate the final temperature operation of the result. and okay now we have similar conditions still the adiabatic case is producing more propylene glycol so definitely stick with this we're not going to spend money on removing or adding heat and we are going to have the best yields 